here on Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh. We end the show with the historic victories for women in Tuesday's midterm elections, particularly women of color. For the first time in the nation's history, there will be more than 100 women in the U.S. House of Representatives. Rashida Tlaib in Michigan, Ilhan Omar in Minnesota, became the first Muslim women elected to Congress. In New York City, 29-year-old Democratic Socialist Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez has become the youngest woman ever elected to Congress. And two Native American women made history by becoming the nation's first Native American Congress. Congresswoman. Democrat Sharice Davis won the third congressional district in Kansas, unseating Republican Kevin Yoder. And in New Mexico, Democrat Deb Holland won in the first congressional district, defeating Janice Arnold Jones. This is Holland speaking at a victory party Tuesday night. Seventy years ago, Native Americans right here in New Mexico couldn't vote. Can you believe that? Growing up in my mother's Pueblo household and as a 35th generation New Mexican, I never imagined a world where I would be represented by someone who looks like me. Tonight, New Mexico, you are sending one of the very first Native American women to Congress. Deb Holland campaigned on progressive issues, including climate change, renewable energy, universal health care, $15 minimum wage. Um, she is former chair of the Democratic Party of New Mexico. Well, Congresswoman-elect Deb Holland, congratulations and welcome to Democracy Now! Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks so much for inviting me. Why don't you start off by talking about what this means? You are a true pathbreaker. You have made history. Um, uh, as you and Sharice Davids um, have both become the first Native American women to enter Congress, this year it seemed like it happened in pairs, you know, the first two Muslim women to <laughs> enter Congress. Yeah. But um, talk about what that means to you. Um, you are Laguna of Pueblo? Yes. And what does that mean? Where did, where, talk about the Laguna yes. of Pueblo and then right. how you brought that so, into electoral so, politics. I mean, first of all, I, I am, of course, extremely proud to um, be elected uh, as, as one of the first Native women. At last, we do have Native women representation in Congress. And uh, I really, you know, I'd like to stress that I started out in politics as a phone volunteer and uh, just worked extremely hard and and was you know came to a point in my uh, political career, so to speak, even though I was mostly a volunteer for many campaigns uh, to run for congress and I, I really want folks to know other native women to know that you don 't have to have heavy political connections to serve your community you can you can volunteer, you can work hard and, um, you know, have opportunities to represent your community. So uh, I'm, I'm very proud uh, that, uh, that my volunteers and my team, we worked extremely hard uh, to win this election. And, um, of course, it would be um, proud to make sure that Native Americans have a voice at the table. Uh, our country has a trust responsibility to Indian tribes, and it seems like their voice has been lacking in so many conversations that uh, we've had in this country. And so I'd like to make sure that tribal leaders have that seat at the table. Well, Deb Holland, can you talk about some of the policies that you hope to, to pursue in, when you're in Congress? Yes. Well, I ran on, as, as, as you mentioned when, in the introduction, I did run on fighting climate change, uh, moving toward 100 percent renewable energy, making sure everyone has health care, uh, funding our public schools properly. Uh, but, I mean, there are so many issues out there. One that has not gotten enough attention over the years is missing and murdered indigenous women. And so, I mean, th those are, you know, that is an epidemic. That's something that we need to work on 
um, I'll go to Congress t to make sure that we are paying attention uh, to the issues that, uh, that folks care about. And, and I mean, missing and murdered indigenous women, uh, yes, we care about that in Indian country, but women care about that issue all over the country. So, uh, so those are the kinds of things I'd like to bring to the forefront of our conversation so that we can solve those issues. So you were elected to Congress on Tuesday. Within 24 hours, President Trump uh, fired his attorney general, uh, Jeff Sessions. Mm -hmm. um, we just had this discussion about what this yeah. means and also the possibility of impeachment with Liz Holtzman, who preceded you in Congress, but from here in New York. What do you think about the idea of impeaching President Trump? Uh, do you feel that the issue is off the table or something that should be explored, perhaps for this reason or others? It absolutely should be explored. You know, there's been an investigation that's ongoing. It looks to me uh, that the president is uh, working to, uh, you know, make some moves uh, before the Congress actually gets sworn in. When And so uh, it absolutely needs to be explored. Uh, we need to consider all options. We have to uh, protect our democracy. And uh, so, I, I mean, I, I'm not saying I didn't run on impeaching Trump. I, di I didn't feel that was uh, something that uh, was, you know, happening with with this election. Um, however, um, the reality is, if he did violate our Constitution, if he did commit any crime, then uh, that is, and if there are found to be impeachable offenses, then we absolutely uh, have to protect our democracy and um, the and fight for the American people. Well, recently, Senator Elizabeth Warren came under fire uh, since releasing a DNA test showing Native American lineage in her family tree. She released a video that told her family's story. My mother was born in eastern Oklahoma. It had been Indian territory until just a few years earlier when it had become a state. My daddy always said he fell head over heels in love with my mother the first time he saw her. But my daddy's parents, the Herrings, were bitterly opposed to their marrying because my mother's family, the Reeds, was part Native American. This sort of discrimination was common at the time. So when my mama was 19 and my daddy was 20, they eloped. And together they built a family, my three older brothers and me. Elizabeth Warren has said her mother told her family had ties to the Cherokee and Delaware tribes. Mm -hmm. But Native Americans across the country criticized Warren's decision to use a DNA test to assert her heritage. Tara Hausker, a national campaign director for Honor the Earth, recently spoke with Democracy Now! about the issue. So um, can you talk about, Deb Holland, your position on this, on, on Elizabeth Warren's decision mm -hmm. uh, uh, to take a DNA test? Sure. Well, uh, look, there throughout our history, there have been so many instances where Native Americans have been adopted out of their families, where they have lost ties to their communities or their families because of the assimilation policies of the United States government. And I can't blame her for wanting to find out more about her family history. Um, and of course, I can't, um, it's not up to me to, to uh, judge anyone however they choose to identify themselves. Uh, Elizabeth Warren has been a champion for working people. Uh, she has been a champion for Native people. She has been a champion for education and, and all of the things that that we should care about in this country. And um, I, I expressed my um, my support of her uh, when she came out with that test because I felt that uh, she found out something about her family that she didn't previously know. And I thought that was important to her. Mm. Your thoughts on Nancy Pelosi. She just announced her intention to run for House Speaker now that the Democrats have taken over. Uh, will you be voting for her, Deb Holland? Yes, I will. And what do you feel about um, this new generation, including you, of uh, Congress members, um, who are a number of them saying they want new leadership in the House? Well, 
at a time like this, you know, we're talking about uh, the possible impeachment of the president right now. I feel it's important that we have a leader who can navigate all of these complex issues and lead our party in the right direction. Uh, I think Nancy Pelosi is uh, extremely qualified to be Speaker of the House because she has been Speaker of the House. Um, I trust her leadership. I trust her judgment. Um, I think that uh, she is the person we need right now. And uh, perhaps uh, when when we move forward and, uh, you know, our po politics isn't uh, as, um, cr you know, in a critical sort of um, era that, um, yes, we, we she, if she's ready to pass the, the mantle on, uh, I will absolutely uh, support, um, you know, another qualified individual. Uh, but currently, I, I think she, she would do a good job. Well, Congressmember-elect Deb Holland, we want to thank you for being with us. We want to ask you to stay so we can continue our conversation and talk about the drought in New Mexico and also the North Dakota voter ID laws and how they affect Native Americans. Uh, we're going to do that and post it online in web exclusive at democracynow.org. But we also have this latest news. Republican Congress member Karen Handel of Georgia has conceded to Democrat Lucy McBath, African-American gun control activist whose son Jordan Davis was shot and killed in 2012 by a white man. Um, I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh. Thanks so much for joining us.